Hello people and welcome back to HANA Fancies. Today I am so excited to be here and to show you how my family celebrate Mooncake Festival. And so today is actually 21st of September, which is a full moon day. Mooncake Festival is always celebrated on full moon because we are thanking the moon for a good harvest. And that is also the reason why it's in autumn. Uh, actually, we call it the full moon of the eighth month because it's actually according to the lunar calendar things. Yeah. This festival is celebrated from the evening to like very late at night and it's very extravagant in many places in the world but at home we're just going minimalistic this year because um, Mooncake Festival is not a holiday, so basically you go to work as normal, but then at night you kind of celebrate and say thank you to the moon. And so I'll be showing you some uh, lovely stories behind the Mooncake Festival celebration in Thailand. And so first of all, uh, Mooncake Festival, I'll be reading for, to you some fun facts I've found. So actually Mooncake Festival originated in China very long ago, um, like hundreds of years ago. And uh, in Chinese, um, you, you call it Zhong Xiu Jie, which means um, a mid-autumn festival. Mooncake festival is always celebrated on full moon day. So full moon, it represents whole, the whole. So it kind of says like um, whole family. So during Zhong Xiu Jie or the uh, mooncake festival, family reunites and so they have they eat a mooncake together and the mooncake is also round representing a moon and um, you kind of cut that into pieces the number of the pieces is equal to members in your family and so each uh, and everyone eat one, pe one piece um, so that kind of say like we're eating the same mooncake and we're staying together as a family really similar to thanksgiving that the family reunites and then we're talking about history of this festival so it's not really clear there are two sides one is not i'm not really sure about that so i'm just going to talk about the first one and i believe you can google the second one um the first one it's about during the song dynasty during that time the mongolians kind of invaded china and so people really want to um, knock back the Mongolians and so they made, created this mooncake. They try to make a very thick dessert so that they can hide some message inside about the war. Um, on the night of full moon, uh, the one we are celebrating right now is actually the start of the war that farmers and um, civilians um, rise up to fight back the Mongolians that is the first thing and there's another um, tales of a fairy up in the moon and her name is um, Chang e, a lady who t who becomes a fairy up in the sky because she takes a medicine for eternity I don't know. and then talking about talking about story about the moon and princess like that there's also this japanese story about princess kaguya and um to tell you first japanese people um they don't celebrate the mooncake festival but they have this story about the princess and the moon as, on the moon as well so here is the story i happen to have at home kaguya hime hime is like the end of the name of a princess you just add that like if the princess name is Hana, you call Hana Hime. Um, so Haguya is a princess, and um, it's the story of two old grand people uh, working, and then one day the grandpa just saw just um, going cutting some bamboos, and then he finds this little lovely girl out from the bamboo, as well as money to raise her up, and then so she grew up into a very lovely princess, um, very lovely teenage girl and everybody likes her and then people try to get her to marry her and then finally nobody could get her because she outwitted them all and they kind of failed to do the quest she requires in order to come to her and so finally um it turns out that she's the princess from the heaven from the cloud kingdom and she kind of turn into this and go back to the moon full moon something like that so that's the story you can also google for but i just really like that book so that that's that's my story about the fat part now let's move on to um the mooncake 
in Thailand and this is the most exciting part because Thai people just love being creative and they have created so many variations um, from the original traditional Chinese mooncake. Um, here's some original uh, details first. So the original Chinese mooncake it consists of um, grains and nuts and herbs and I call that ying or maybe it's lotus seed inside so it's kind of plain and it's like really true to the original concept of thinking the harvest because that's what you get from the harvest you put that into your sweets but in Thailand we are so creative that we add durian inside as well as um, solid eggs and also like um, red bean and matcha as well as like macadamia or um, coffee flavor or even chocolate so there's so many variations there but today I'm just sticking to the most famous and well-known and strange which is the durian stuffing and yeah so I'll be showing you another thing first so you'll be amazed by this this is the packaging of the mooncakes sold in Thailand so you can say it's like the golden dragon here and it's really beautiful and this for real really much add up the sale of the store so during this season season about like three weeks before the mooncake festival celebration store starts selling their goods their sweets and they have they have like the competition of the most beautiful packaging ever so you can see like each year there will be like these kind of things out this one is very beautiful as well you can see it's actually like the hill and the chinese um i don't know what you call it temple actually this circle is the moon can you can you imagine that it, it's actually the moon i'll show you the look of the moon cake first and then tonight um uh, when the festival is celebrated I'll just show you the inside and a test test honest review here is how the moon cake look and if you um, are um, you can see it's actually like a dragon press here so yeah that's a dragon and so I'll be opening this one to show you not if not only the packaging looks good because um, the inside looks good as well and sometimes it just make kind of like a drawer or something like that but this one inside various um, patterns of flowers in there very beautiful as well so this one opens like this the other one like this one it's actually a hex hexagon um, with a lid here or some other places they just go with like this kind of things with a girl up here and then you open it like this this is just a, just a normal one i've seen weirder things more extravagant uh, but i don't have it this year so So here's the cutting and um, so I'll be having one of this durian thing and one of this moving thing and then uh, I'll be reviewing them. Hello people, um, it's actually my second take of the honest taste review because the first one I showed while having the durian flavored mooncake and so I'm doing it again. Um, so yeah, there's already like some bite trace marks here but Anyway, oh, so, so this is like the durian thing. I'll try it first. Good thing about like second try is that you get to have that second thought and reevaluate what you're having in your mouth. And so, I mean, uh, <clears throat> oh my god, I, I feel like choking again. Okay, it's sticky, really sticky. It's everywhere in my mouth right now. Got stuck um, between my teeth, um, around my gums. Um, I don't know if that's a good thing, but I don't like that feeling at all. Yeah, it's really sticky. I thought the only sticky part would be the durian thing, but turn out that the flower here is sticky as well. So everything got sticky. It's like having sweet mud in your mouth I and mean, it's not a bad that bad thing like having mud in your mouth it's like so sticky mm, yeah four out of five it's pretty much a bit too sweet for me um but apart from that it's really nice and um i have had like okay the seed the white seed in it so now I agree, it's watermelon seed, a giant watermelon seed, and so, 
yeah, it gives like kind of change in the, your mood while chewing. So you'll be like, oh my god, this is so sticky. Mm. Oh, it's there. It's stuck on. Ah. They're like, mmm. What's this texture sensation I got? Like, yeah, it's kind of like crunchy. And then that is the watermelon seed. So it kind of. It brings back some scores I would give. So actually, at first, I would give like 3.5 out of 5. But then I got this watermelon seed and it saved the day for this durian thing. I give it 4 out of 5. And so for now I'm having this knowing thing which is like the five grains I've mentioned earlier. The color is really pretty even though I have already bite it, bitten. <laughs> and so I've had the eggs, so here's the honest review for the eggs. Uh it really adds up the color and makes it really beautiful as well as um the flavor. The egg is salted and so it's kinda salty and then it cuts the sweetness of this um fruit jam inside and so it's the perfect combination. But I'm giving this only like a 4.5 out of 5 because there's this bergamot leaf smell. I think that's a bergamot. And for me as a Thai, I associate bergamot with savory food more than sweets. And so this one gives me some sort of like a weird sensation. Like you're having a sweet, a moon cake. And then it's like, oh, why is there this smell? But if there's no this smell, I would think I would give it like a 5 out of 5 because texture is really nice there's so many types of grains inside and so you get that changing feeling while chewing and that is pretty amazing and um yeah then apart from that it's, i think it's kind of spicy and hot inside because while chewing i feel like it's kind of spicy it burns my tongue a little so i'm not sure whether that is because like of some sort of herbs or what but yeah pretty much likely to be some herbs inside that create that kind of hotness um so the last one is called a kanom natak so kanom actually means um dessert and natak means um broken face and so here you can see the egg wash it looks pretty broken broken so yeah um this one is like the chinese way of making a cookie and so i'll be tasting ah so the egg wash looks so so yellow here so yeah i'll i think it's gonna taste like eggs but yeah, yeah let's try oh my god very flaky be careful while eating this you might choke or you might have to clean your floor or your table again okay so this one is so different from the first two because it's not very sweet at all it's moderate and kind of to the side of like not that sweet either so i really like it and um it's dry it's flaky but it's chewy at that same time but it's not like chewy like chewing gum but it it's nice when you chew it i smell some bit traces of baking soda I know in the western side you say like okay you screwed up man you have like the baking soda in your food but like and in this particular cookie I think it's really nice like the smell goes well with other ingredients so that's kind of weird for me but I really like it and this one I would give it like a 4.5 out of 5 no a 4.75 out of 5 and um, the um, last two 0.25 goes with the being too flaky because I don't know it just it's too dry and I don't like it it kind of like goes everywhere on the table and things like that and so that's how I rate things thank you so much for today's um staying with me with this honest test review and I hope to see you again on my next video bye